Madison, I'm so sorry to call you at this hour. Are you awake? Can I come over? Hey, Natalie, don't worry. I just got up. Yeah, sure. You can come over. What's going on? Is everything okay? Thank you. You're the best friend ever. I'm on my way to your place right now. Right now? To my place? I haven't even cleaned up yet. It's still dark outside. Can you at least tell me what's happening? I'll tell you when I get there. But I'll give you a hint. I'm done with Austin. I'm leaving him for good. What? You're leaving Austin? Have you guys been having problems? I know sometimes couples need a break, but this is so sudden. I'm not just taking a break. I'm taking Melissa with me and getting out of there. We need a safe place to stay for a while. My parents are too far away and I have no one else to turn to. Can you please let us crash at your place for a few days? Well, I don't know, Natalie. We don't really have any spare rooms or anything. Isn't there a motel or something you can go to? I don't have time to look for a motel. I don't have money to pay for a motel. I don't have any options left. I need your help, Madison. Can't we sort out the details later? I'm almost there. Hold on. Have you talked to my parents yet? They have a big house with plenty of space for guests. Stephen and I live in a tiny apartment. It's going to be really cramped for you and Melissa here, you know. I can't go to your parents, Madison. You don't get it. I can't stay with Austin's family. Please say you'll take us in. You're my only hope. Stefan is out of town anyway, right? We'll be gone before he gets back, I promise. We don't need much space. We can sleep on the couch or the floor. Stefan's office is empty, right? Yeah, Stephen is away for a couple of weeks, but that doesn't mean we have extra room. Why can't you go to my parents? It might be awkward, but it's better than nothing. Look, I don't want to make a big deal out of this, but the truth is I'm not just leaving Austin. I'm running away from him. I need to stay somewhere he won't find me. You won't tell him, will you? Running away? What do you mean? Can you please just tell me what's going on? It's hard to say, but ever since we got married, Austin has been a monster to me. I thought maybe things would change after we had Melissa, but they only got worse. I can't take it anymore. The only way for me to save myself and my daughter is to get a divorce. If Austin ever finds out, I don't know what he'll do to me. I'm terrified, Madison. He's been a monster to you? How? That doesn't sound like Austin at all. I've known him since we were kids, and he's never been angry or violent with anyone. I'm not lying, Madison. He hits me all the time. If I do anything wrong or say anything he doesn't like, he loses it. No one knows because I cover up the bruises. I've been too embarrassed to ask for help until now. Lately, he's been hitting me every day in front of Melissa. I can't take it anymore. Oh my god. I can't believe this. I'm so sorry, Natalie. He's always been so sweet. It's unthinkable that he would hurt anyone, let alone his wife. He's a charming man in public. He's charismatic and everyone adores him. But behind closed doors, he's a different person. I don't know who he is anymore. I've been living in denial for years now. I've been living in terror all this time. I'm going to reclaim my life, and I'm going to protect Melissa. That's why I'm running away. Natalie, I'm so sorry. I had no clue. I would have been there for you sooner if I'd known. My main priority is Melissa's safety. He hasn't hit her yet, but who knows when he'll lose it. She's barely four years old and he's already screaming at her. I don't want her to grow up in fear. I can't let this go on. I'm scared he'll end up hurting Melissa. So that's why you're running away. I appreciate you telling me. He's spiteful and won't let us go without a fight. We have to go somewhere he won't suspect. That's why we absolutely can't stay with your parents. It's the first place he'd check. Your place would be ideal. You just moved in, right? I don't think he knows your new address yet. Please. 
I wouldn't be asking you if it wasn't critical. You're my only chance. I get it. It's true. He doesn't know my new address yet. But I'm not sure. Austin left early this morning with a buddy to go golfing. He won't be back until this evening. This might be my only opportunity to leave. So I have to go now. Please, you have to help us. I don't know what will happen if he comes home and sees our bags packed. I understand. Given the situation, I'll do my best to make space for the two of you. Really? Thank you, Madison. I'm so grateful. I'm on my way now. Don't worry about preparing a guest room. I can help you when I get there. Sure. You don't have to worry anymore, okay? You'll be safe here. It's gonna be tight to fit everyone in our small apartment, but we'll manage. Seriously? You're a lifesaver. I owe you big time. Thank you a million times over. If we leave now, I should be there in about half an hour. Okay. Please drive carefully and I'll see you and Melissa soon. This is a huge weight off my shoulders. Really. We can finally live in peace. Thank you, Madison. I know we haven't always gotten along, but I appreciate you looking out for us. It should go without saying, but in case Austin tries to contact you, please don't tell him anything. He can't find out where Melissa and I are under any circumstances. All right, I'm driving now. See you soon. Natalie, it's way past bedtime. When are you coming home? Melissa is exhausted, but she won't go to sleep without you here. Can you hurry up and get back here? Oh, I lost track of time. Sorry. Jeez, I should have been more careful. I'll head out now and be home in 30 minutes, okay? This would be fine if it was a one-time thing. But you've been coming home late almost every night. I don't want to meddle, but what are you doing? I know you're going through a lot right now, but I wish you were here to take care of your daughter at least. I've been watching her all day, every day for the last week and a half. It's messing up my work. I know. I'm sorry. It's just that everything with the divorce is taking longer than I expected. With a job and apartment hunt on top of that, I'm overwhelmed. Even so, coming home near midnight every night is not okay. You can do some of that at home on my computer anyway. You're not the only one who has things to do. Please be more thoughtful. Madison, I get where you're coming from, but please give me a break. This whole change has been hard. You work from home, so it should be easy for you to keep an eye on Melissa while I'm out. It's the least you can do for me. Just because I work from home doesn't mean I have the time to look after a five-year-old. It's not like I'm lounging around here. I've been trying to keep up with the cleaning and cooking as well. You said you'd be staying with me until you found an apartment, but it's been a month. I never agreed to babysit Melissa every day. There's a limit to how much I can do for you, you know. To be honest with you, I don't think this living situation will work anymore. Come on, Madison. Don't be so hard on me. It's not like I'm out late having fun. I'm working hard to get my life together. I'm doing my best to make sure Melissa and I can find a safe place to live. It's not going to happen overnight. Can't you help us out for a little longer? I'm trying to be understanding, but I'm paying for all your living and food costs. You're putting me in a tough spot. I'm already doing everything I can to make the two of you comfortable. I can't take it much longer. I do appreciate everything you've done for us so far. I'm just asking you to hang on a little longer. That's all. In my defense, if I don't go out and look for a job, I'll never be able to leave your place. Melissa is too young to go to preschool, and I can't just drag her along with me to interviews. Please don't be so mean to me. I'm doing my best. Natalie, of course I understand that you're in a tough spot, but honestly, I feel like you're abusing my kindness. If you don't sort out a job and living situation soon, we're gonna have a problem. I'm just asking you to be a little more respectful of my situation. I'm sorry for the trouble. You know, I always thought you were a nice person. I didn't realize you were this cold. I guess you never really know someone until they show their true colors. Excuse me? I already know that Melissa and I are a nuisance. You don't have to make me feel worse. 
I'm still dealing with the trauma your brother caused me. It's going to take some time before I can heal and put my life back together. I think it's very cruel of you to judge someone in my position. No, <laughs> I'm sorry if that's the way you interpreted it. I'm trying to be transparent with you about my concerns, that's all. Please try to understand where I'm coming from as well. I understand completely. But the reality is that you are living in a new house with a loving husband and a good job. I have none of that and I'm just trying my best. I will try to be better, okay? I won't stay out so late anymore. I would appreciate that. Thank you. If you can't figure out a better schedule, I'm gonna have to ask you to find somewhere else to stay. But that's final. Well, then please be home soon. Melissa's looking forward to spending quality time with her mother, you know? I know, I know. I'm on my way. I'll work on my schedule, okay? Don't worry about it. Natalie, can we talk now? I hate to interrupt you while you're out, but this is urgent. Are you busy? What's up, Madison? I have a few minutes. Stephen reached out to you about the housing situation, didn't he? Do you get what we're saying? Oh, about him coming back from his business trip, right? I did get a message from him earlier. He told me to pack my bags and leave. Well, you know, he's coming home next week and we need our room back. I'm sure he wasn't that rude, but we do need to find you somewhere else to stay before he gets here. I've been assigned a big project for my work, so I can't watch Melissa for you during the day anymore. I know, I know. God, you two are so demanding. I have my own side of the story. If you'll hear me out. <laughs> There's not much to discuss at this point, but go ahead. You want me out of the house by next week, right? I can do that, but only if you agree to watch Melissa while I'm gone. You want me to look after your daughter until you leave? Don't you think that's a bit much? I told you before, I don't have time. I have work to do. I don't know what you're planning to do for this week, but you need to get your act together. It's been three months and you still haven't found a job or a place to live. What? Do you think I've been wasting time? I have plans. Actually, I got in touch with a friend who told me about an organization that hires people to work as live-in housekeepers. They invited me to visit their facility for an interview, but it's too far to commute from your place. I'll have to stay there for a few days. It's out of state. I can't just bring Melissa with me, obviously. If this interview goes well, I'll have a job and a place to live. It's a great opportunity. Really? Why didn't you tell me about this sooner? I only got a call from the hiring manager this morning. I was one of their top choices. So if I show up to the interview, I'm pretty much guaranteed the job. If you can just bear with Melissa for a few more days, I'll be out of your way, okay? Please, this is my final favor for you. I swear. I understand that this is a great opportunity for you, but I really don't know if I can take care of Melissa while you're gone. I promise this is the last thing I'll ask of you. I need your help. This is the perfect chance. I finally found a place where I can work and raise Melissa at the same time. I don't want to miss this opportunity. You're the one who wants me to move out as soon as possible. All you have to do is watch Melissa for a few more days. Fine, but this is your last shot, got it? I'll try to arrange some meetings to make time. Oh, thank you. You're the best, Madison. I know I can always rely on you. I'll be leaving for the interview tomorrow morning. I'll start packing now. If you don't get this job, you'll still have to find another place to live. That's final, Natalie. Please come back right after the interview. I'll do my best to make time for Melissa, but honestly, I'm overbooked. I know that. Stop being such a nervous wreck. Give me three days, tops. I'm sure I'll get this job. I'm counting on you, Madison. Madison, long time no see. How have you been? Are you well? How's Stefan? Thanks so much for all your help. I'll come pick up Melissa now, if you don't mind. Natalie, what are you doing? It's been a year. How can you contact me out of the blue like this as if nothing happened? Please, 
There's no reason to be so harsh. Has it really been that long? I didn't realize. Oops, my bad. Shouldn't you be a little happier to hear from me? I think my tone is justified. You can't seriously waltz back here and pretend like everything is okay. Don't you remember what happened last year? You told me you would be gone for three days tops and left me with your daughter. Then you dropped off the face of the earth. You abandoned Melissa and ran away. Oh, sorry about all that. It sounds worse when you say it that way. I apologize, okay? Is that what you wanted to hear? If you can just hang in there with Melissa for a few more days, I'll be out of your hair. Isn't that what you told me? It's been more than a few days, don't you think? I don't know how you can take all this so lightly. This is serious, Natalie. We've been trying to contact you since then, but you've ignored all our calls. I assumed we'd never hear from you again. Do you understand the position you've put Stephen and me in? There's no way you can apologize and move on like this. Not after what you've done. I said I'm sorry. God. You don't have to keep pestering me like that. Anyway, thanks to you, I found a good place to live. Now that I'm more established, I can take Melissa back. I've also got a new boyfriend who is going to absolutely spoil her. He's stepfather material. So without further ado, I'll be stopping by to take my daughter back. You will not come to our home again under any circumstance. If I see you on our property, I'm calling the police. Understand? Excuse me? What's gotten into you? It's not like I'm going there for tea. I'll just grab Melissa and her things and leave. Melissa isn't staying with us anymore. Go talk to Austin about it. He's been taking care of Melissa ever since you abandoned her. There's no reason for you to come to our house. Stay away! You gave Melissa to Austin? Didn't I tell you he's violent? Why would you endanger my daughter like that? What are you thinking? How long has she been there? Is she okay? I can't believe you'd hand a child over to a violent abuser like that. Have you no shame? Didn't I tell you before you left that I couldn't watch over Melissa for more than a few days? You left her for a year. I would have had to leave my job to take care for her. I had no other option. Now. Return my daughter now. Who knows what sort of horrible treatment she suffered at the hands of that man. I trusted you. That's why I left my daughter in your hands. You're horrible. You're just as awful as your brother. That's strange because I'm still in regular contact with Melissa and Austin. She seems very happy. I don't think she'd leave her father's side by now, even if he showed up. Honestly, I think she's better off with him than anywhere near you. How can you say such a thing? Without me there to protect her, who knows what's going to happen? Aren't you worried? I can't believe you could do such a thing to a child. She's five years old. Oh yeah? About all that. I know all of that is a lie. You made it up. We are all very aware of your lies at this point. There's no point keeping up this ridiculous act. I would never entrust the care of a child to a violent man. And I have done no such thing. What? What are you saying? What lies? I have been completely honest with you. Austin never laid a hand on you, did he? You just wanted an excuse to run away. Everything you told me in order to manipulate me into letting you stay at our house was a lie. I think the majority of things you've told me have been lies, haven't they? What gave you that idea? I don't know what you're talking about. I've never lied in my whole life. How dare you assume otherwise? I was worried about my safety. That's why I ran away from Austin. Please. You only said that to ruin Austin's character in case he decided to press charges against you. You divorced him suddenly and ran away to avoid your culpability. Austin reached out to us to explain everything. Your little story hour is over, Natalie. Why do you believe anything he says? He's a psychopath. He's a violent man. Don't trust him. He's making up things to trap me again. Can't you see that? It's true that Austin has been looking for you since the divorce. Right? See? He's obsessive after the divorce went through. He kept sending threatening messages. 
I had no choice but to leave my daughter somewhere safe and run. He's trying to force me back by using Melissa as bait. You and I both know that's not the reason he was looking into you. You're trying to paint Austin in the worst light possible to make yourself look better. You're making up excuses. After all, you ran away from Austin after stealing a large sum of money, didn't you? You also took Melissa without settling on child custody. Austin was looking for you so that he could take you to court. You stole from him and kidnapped his child. Please, Madison. You have to believe me. I'm not a liar. He's the one who hit me in the first place. I had no choice but to take the money on my child. If you want me to believe you, you better show me some proof. My word should be enough. He never left bruises on the visible areas after all. Why should I have to give you proof? Why can't you believe me? That's interesting, because Austin has a lot of evidence of your lies. What? What evidence? It's not looking very good for you at the moment, Natalie. I won't sugarcoat it. Tell me, what does he have on me? There's no way. Why is he collecting evidence? I think that's pretty obvious, don't you? Well, for one, he used the evidence to convince us of his innocence. That's why he has Melissa now. You can't really believe some papers over my word, can you? What sort of evidence does he claim to have? <laughs> I saw your conversations with that Robert guy with my own two eyes. You were cheating on Austin for years before running away, weren't you? We've all seen everything. We know all about you destroying Austin's career in an attempt to receive alimony and full custody. The only reason you took Melissa with you in the first place was because you assumed you could force Austin to pay child support. The conversation between you and Robert details every step of your shameless plan. What? What do you know about Robert? How did he get those messages? I mean, um, what messages? I've never heard of this, Robert. The whole thing started four years ago when you met Robert at a coffee shop. He asked you for your number and you were too flattered to turn him down. We have the copies of all your messages. Austin realized that something was wrong right away, but he didn't know the specifics. When you realized you were close to being found out, you came up with an escape plan. You thought you could come up with a genius plan to not only run away with your boyfriend, but also to force Austin to pay for it. Did you seriously think you'd be able to pull that off? You really are delusional. How did he find out about all this? If Austin knew about this, why didn't he talk to me earlier? You don't seriously believe all that, do you? Stop joking around. After you left with his money and daughter, Austin decided to hire a personal investigator. He wanted more than anything to make sure Melissa was safe. He never expected to dig up all this dirt about you. Anyways, the investigator has been following you this whole time. We know everything. It's good that you're back in town. They'll finally be able to get you in court. Huh? They're going to sue me? Of course. You stole money and took a child away from their home. Oh, and don't forget about slander against Austin. You lied and told everyone he was a wife beater. The jig is up, Natalie. It's time for you to face the consequences. Since you don't have any evidence to support your story, it's not looking great for you. No, no. You're joking. Please say all of this is just a practical joke. Why would he go to such lengths? I can't believe this. You started this, Natalie. You're the one who crossed the line long ago. What sort of person fakes domestic violence claims, steals money, and abandons their child at a relative's house? You lived off of my money at my house for months. Don't you feel even a little guilty? You were never looking for a job in the first place. Up until now, you've been living off of the stolen money and relaxing with your boyfriend, haven't you? What? The detective even looked into that? Of course. And now that the money has run out, you're back here to cause more problems. You intended to take back your daughter in order to force Austin to pay child support. I've talked to the investigator myself. We know exactly what you're trying to accomplish, and we won't let it happen. I can't believe this. This is insane. All of my plans. I trusted you. How could you go behind my back like that? You and your brother are rotten cowards. Moving on. I have my own complaints for you. 
The burden of caring for Melissa after you abandoned her led to many obstacles in my personal and work life. I intend to claim damages as well. Be prepared to pay me back in full. Austin also expects you to pay back the stolen money with interest as well as alimony payments. I hope you have the funds prepared. If not, you're going to be in debt for a long time. I can't afford all that. I haven't worked in over a year. I've used every cent to my name. I can't even afford a lawyer to defend myself. My only option is to run again. You've given me no other choice. I won't let you win. Hmm, no problem. I'll just go after Robert instead, since he is the one who started the affair in the first place. I hope you realize that we already have his home address, phone number, workplace, and family contacts documented. Trying to run is a waste of time. We will track you down. You can't. You can't do that to Robert. Either way, this doesn't end well for me. This is completely unfair. What am I supposed to do now? Your only option now is to shut up, sit down, and cooperate. We have no intention of forgiving you for your actions. You will be held responsible. It is in your best interest to surrender immediately, before things get even worse for you. I should have never trusted you in the first place. You've let me down, Madison. I was so close to being free from all of this. No, boo-hoo. Don't come running to me for sympathy. You're the one who's been coming up with plans to deceive and betray every person in your life. Reality is reality. You can't do anything to change it now. This time you can't run away. Don't expect anyone to come to your rescue either. After that, my brother found out where Natalie and Robert were staying. The two of us went to confront them and Austin demanded payment for the damage they caused. Altogether, Natalie owed alimony payments, child support, a repayment of the stolen money, and legal fees. Apparently, the money issues caused a rift to form between Natalie and Robert. They decided to break up. Before long, Natalie was forced to move back in with her parents in a neighboring state due to the nature of the incident. Natalie's parents are having her monitored 24-7. She's practically a prisoner in her own family home. I have heard that she's taken up three different jobs in order to keep up with the payments. It'll be decades before she can pay everything off. I am also receiving small payments bit by bit to repay me for the trouble she caused while staying at my home. Austin has taken full custody of Melissa, and it is unlikely that Natalie will ever be able to see her daughter again. My brother and his daughter are living a simple, happy life. I think he makes a wonderful father. For Melissa's sake, it's better if Natalie isn't involved. Someone like Natalie, who is able to lie and go behind everyone's backs for her own benefit, is not fit to be a mother. I have no sympathy for a woman like her. In order to live a life of luxury for a single year, Natalie ruined the rest of her life. There is no running now. <laughs>